Hello and welcome. Good evening, viewers, and good evening, my fellow panelists. Let me introduce them. I'm Nitin Gokhale of Bharat Shakti dot in in India, calling, uh, speaking to you from Delhi, and uh, we are on this uh, webinar jointly organized by the Aero India show uh, that is coming up uh, in February at Bangalore uh, later uh, next month, early next month, in fact, in February. and of course the department of defense production of the ministry of defense government of india and uh, joining me today remotely of course uh, in these times of pandemic are uh, three speakers very distinguished uh, scholars and uh, practitioners uh, first up uh, there is uh, rear admiral sudarshan shrikhande uh, former chief of uh, indian navy's uh, foreign cooperation and uh, a former defense attache in australia among many other accomplishments during his distinguished career in the indian navy uh, there is sanga uh, uh, abhay gunashekar from colombo he is the founder director of inss um, uh, think tank uh, based in colombo and of course uh, a well known scholar from sri lanka on the indian ocean region as well as uh, the indo pacific uh, very prolific writer uh, seminar speaker and someone who watches uh, the indian ocean space uh, very closely uh, not just for sri lanka but uh, for other think tanks uh, across the world welcome both of you and we are expecting uh, the general uh, musa jalil uh, from uh, maldives to join us in a moment uh, remote uh, connectivity is always an issue but uh, we have just spoken to him about 10 minutes ago he should be joining us uh, very soon uh, the subject uh, of the uh, webinar is uh, of course consolidating defense capabilities of uh, indian ocean region countries for security of global commons it's a vast subject uh, and uh, without uh, wasting much of a time i would like to go to the speakers but let me just set the uh, tone for the uh, seminar itself or the webinar uh, this as i said is in the in the run up to the aero india show uh, in bangalore where um, defense uh, companies uh, defense stakeholders defense officials are all expected to converge uh, between 3rd and 5th of february uh, later uh, in the uh, next month in fact and uh, the entire uh, purpose of this webinar is to figure out uh, how the indo pacific and the indian ocean region is uh, coping with new challenges some old some new uh, the newest challenge of course is the uh, havoc uh, wrought by uh, the pandemic uh, the covid 19 pandemic the old challenges are of the uh, piracy human trafficking drug trafficking and uh, indian ocean region as the uh, the area of contestation between uh, different powers especially india and china and uh, non resident powers like the united states australia and uh, japan in a way uh, since we are talking about uh, the area uh, around india and the indian ocean region uh, uh, countries like sri lanka maldives and uh, maybe shashels and morishels uh, this is something that uh, we are going to discuss uh, if general uh, musa jalil welcome uh, i hope you can hear me uh, loud and clear from delhi uh, uh, sir uh, receive you loud and clear yeah okay good uh, welcome admiral shrikande thank you and uh, my friend asanga in colombo uh, thank you for joining at a short notice so um, as uh, i was saying uh, general jalil uh, the uh, organization of this uh, webinar is is part of a series of webinars that uh, different think tanks different associations industry associations are doing with uh, in collaboration with the aero india organizers uh, which is uh, happening in uh, bangalore next month in collaboration with the department of defense production of the government of india the ministry of defense so uh, welcome to the program and as i was uh, mentioning indian ocean region uh, has several uh, challenges for the countries based here and uh, also for the countries uh, which are not exactly part of the indian ocean but are res non resident powers in a way like the united states uh, so if i can come to you general jalil for your opening remarks on uh, what you see as uh, the uh, way forward as far as consolidating not just defense capability but cooperation between different countries in the indian ocean region 
Yeah. And then we will uh, go back to uh, the other two panelists before we start this discussion. Over to you, General Jaitley. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good afternoon, gentlemen. First of all, I want to compliment Mr. Eugene A. Gokel for creating a webinar of this very important topic and thank him for giving me a chance to share my views on the issue. I'm delighted to be in the company of Dekande from India and Mr. Abey Gunasekara from Sri Lanka. This online webinar is a wonderful opportunity for me to bring out a Maldivian's perspective on the table. It is indeed a pride, a pleasure, and a privilege for me to be among esteemed journalists. Thank you. In today's scenario of increasing transnational crimes in the Indian Ocean region, consolidating the defense capabilities of the Indian Ocean region countries for security of global commons has become a very contemporary issue. Any sane person with a balanced mind knows that only the way forward is ensuring security and growth for all in the region is to consolidate the defense capabilities of the nation of the Indian Ocean region. Towards this, I wholeheartedly appreciate and acknowledge the role played by the government of India in supporting the defense capability building and capability enhancement for nations of the Indian Ocean region. Not only does it facilitate stable governments in the Indian Ocean region, but also facilitates freedom of navigation and secure sea lines of communications for the mercantile traffic in the region. Let me share with you our borders. Maldives shares borders with India, Sri Lanka, and Czech Rose. The northern tip of the Maldives to the southern tip of the Indian Minicoy is 72 nautical miles. Northern tip of Maldives to the Sri Lanka is 385 nautical miles. The southern tip of Maldives to the northern tip of Chagos is about 240 nautical miles. Point to emphasize is the trilateral point that India, Maldives, and Sri Lanka share is about 200 nautical miles east of Malay Atoll. When we talk about the Indian Ocean region, we need to talk about the sea lines of communications. Let me say, that Maldives constitute of three sea lines communications, the eight degree channel between India and Maldives, the one and a half degree channel between Dam Atoll and Hodu Atoll of Maldives, the equatorial channel is between Hodu Atoll and Formula. However, due to our porous borders, additional channels are being used as innocent passages. Transnational crimes and incidents in the Indian Ocean region. Due to the great number of piracy and armed robbery incidents off the Horn of Africa and West India, in December 2008, the European Union launched the European Naval Force, Operation Atlanta. This resulted in the piracy activities being shifted east and operating around 1,900 nautical miles east of Africa and some being apprehended by the MNDF Coast Guard in the Maldivian waters. Though piracy incidents have significantly reduced in the Gulf and have been pushed further westward due to the electricity of the Indian Navy in the Indian and Maldivian EEZ. Let me talk about the drug trafficking and weapons and human trafficking. The persistent threat of drug smuggling by the Golden Triangle and the, and the capability gaps of, of MNDF and the 1,200 islands of Maldives provides an easy location of shelters for such drug peddlers. Let me share three major drug-related incidents occurred in the Maldives in October 2020. On the third 
Maldives police have arrested 14 individuals and seized 98 kilos of drugs in a major drug operation in the southernmost atolls of the Maldives. On October 2020, during a joint operation conducted by the security forces of India, Sri Lanka and Maldives, An Iranian flag boat was intercepted approximately 172 miles northwest of Turakunut. 70 kilograms of drugs were confiscated and the boat from the boat intercepted. The appropriate approximate value of the confiscated substance would be around 59.2 million Maldivian rupees, equivalent to 3.8 million US dollars. MDF court. MNDF Coast Guard sought assistance from an Indian aircraft for surveillance during the operations as the MNDF Coast Guard of the Defense Forces does not have a full-fledged air component currently. October 2020, again, about 100 kilograms of drug, including heroin, were seized from a board in the vicinity, in the vicinity of the nation's capital. With the two principal areas of illicit opium production, the Golden Triangle and the Golden Crescent, located in, in the rim of the Indian Ocean, the trafficking of drugs is a serious and looming threat. This is further proven by the incident of 2007, where 1.6 tons of narcotics were found stashed in the lagoon within our waters. For a nation that predominantly survives from tourism and fisheries, Threats of such natures are matters of serious national security concern. The Maldives with a large expatriate labor force in the country, the government of Maldives is highly concerned about human trafficking. I think it's very appropriate for me to talk about the Indo-Maldives joint training exercises since we are talking about consolidating the defense uh, forces. Exercise DOSI was a bilateral exercise started in 1991. In 2001, it became a trilateral exercise between India, Maldives, and Sri Lanka. This maritime exercise is conducted once every two years, and the 14th edition has been conducted last year, November 18. Ongoing Indo Maldives bilateral exercises, the 10th edition of Aquarium was conducted in Pune in October. October 2020, and the third edition of Ekata was held in Maldives in May 2020. I would like to touch upon some of the commendable Indian military assistance, especially in maritime fields to the Maldives. I will start off with uh, Op Cactus. Op, Op Cactus is a tri service uh, operation by Indian Army, Navy, and Air Force. I believe that every Maldivian uh, will know and talk about Op Cactus when we talk about Indo-Maldives uh, uh, relationship or uh, uh, assistance. Well, uh, the next I would like to highlight the Op Cactus, that is after the tsunami, uh, the Indian uh, assistance by uh, INS uh, Mysore, Udagiri, Taragiri, and Atiya. And we did have uh, Air Force two Air Force. I did not forget to mention about Op Near, the assistance rendered uh, during our water crisis in 2014. When we come about uh, talking about COVID, the evacuation of uh, nine MNDF personnel from Wuhan during the COVID by the uh, Indian military of Sanjiwan assistance of medicine during the COVID, of Samatra Setu, the evacuation of 2,400 Indians struck in the Maldives during the COVID. And I would like to mention Mission Saga, May 2020, uh, the provision of 580 tons uh, delivered by the Indian Navy ship Kesari during the COVID. Let me just highlight the other assistance uh, by the government of India and the Indian Navy in particular have rendered. 
Commission of Huawei in 2006, Joint Indo Maritime Surveillance since 2009, establishment of coastal radar system to enhance maritime surveillance from 2008, establishment of MNDF Air Wing 2010. Establishment of 20 bed military hospital Senahia 2012, provision of landing craft May 2014, construction of training center in Mafila Fushi 2019, provision of ship Kamiya 2019, provision of two ALH and Donia aircraft, provision of hardware and training support as on required basis. The ongoing construction of MOD building in Mali and the ongoing construction of the police academy in Addo et al. Let me just touch upon the NSA level trilateral meetings between India, Maldives and Sri Lanka. India, Sri Lanka and Maldives concerned about the instability of the IOR led to NSA level meetings till date. Four successful meetings were held. The joint press statement released on November 28, 2020 at Colombo on the fourth NSA level trilateral meeting states that the countries agreed to broad-based cooperation by expanding the scope to improve intelligence sharing on issues like terrorism, radicalization, extreme drugs, arms, and human trafficking. Time environment. Presented virtually at senior officials' level. Trilateral meetings were held on firstly in the Maldives 2011, secondly 2013 at Sri Lanka, thirdly 2014 at India, and fourthly 2020 at Sri Lanka. The countries recognized the significance of the forum by promoting meaningful cooperation in the Indian Ocean region on common issues to maritime security of the region. Well, I think there's some connectivity issue. Uh, of course, uh, we are speaking uh, at uh, far distance. Uh, so uh, we will come back to uh, General Zalil uh, when uh, we get the uh, connection back. Uh, but Asanga, uh, if you can uh, take up uh, the uh, points or maybe continue from there, uh, where General uh, Zalil was speaking about uh, the trilateral cooperation between India, Sri Lanka and Maldives, especially for stability of the Indian Ocean region and maybe other points that you want to make uh, over to you uh, for the moment and then we'll come back to General Zalil after that. We are not able to hear you, uh, Asanga. Yeah, I think uh, General Jalil is getting Thank back you, on you. Uh, uh, Thank you very much yeah. for the invitation. Um, I hope yeah. uh, I'm clear and you can hear me. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I'll, if I pick it up uh, from... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud yeah. and clear. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jalil will come back to you. Uh, we lost you in between. Uh, so I'm asking Asan to continue. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead, Asan. Go ahead. Um, Nitin, can I go ahead? Yes, please. Go ahead, Asanga. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Um, nothing. I think he's back. Uh, so, General uh, Zanil, can you hear me? Thank you very much, Nitin, uh, for the invitation. Uh, I think it's a, a very timely topic that you're discussing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a timely topic, topic that you're discussing, uh, which is consolidating defense capabilities uh, of the Indian Ocean region. And um, I mean, if you, if I sort of pick it up from uh, where my previous speaker was speaking um, I, I on the. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Asana, go ahead. Um, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the trilateral partnership, uh, which is a, actually, a, I, I see it as a huge, yeah, it's a huge achievement um, for Sri Lanka, India, and Maldives, um, which was signed on the fourth national security, you know, advisor level, um, the trilateral meeting, which happened, which happened in November. And um, I think it's a huge achievement for the three countries um, because the last meeting was held in 2014. And you can see that, uh, you know, countries uh, such as Maldives, Sri Lanka, uh, we, we face uh, very sort of simple threats uh, when it will be uh, sort of terrorism, extremism, um, IUU fishing, uh, drug, uh, drug trafficking. So I think um, um, these partnerships uh, sort of consolidates uh, as well as uh, strengthens um, the security cooperation. Uh, between the three countries. Um, I want to sort of uh, uh, bring in uh, what the um, Indian High Commissioner, uh, uh, basically uh, His Excellency Gopal Bagle in Sri Lanka, um, he says something very important. He says that um, uh, about a free and open and inclusive in the Pacific uh, as an important uh, for Sri Lanka as it is for India. Uh, it is a matter of great um, happiness to hear a similar views articulated in the senior echelons of the government of Sri Lanka, uh, including um, at a plurilateral occasions, such as the, the trilateral meeting um, uh, between Maldives, India, and Sri Lanka. So I think um, the uh, Sri Lanka, India, uh, uh, being uh, uh, close partners in many, uh, facing many uh, issues such as the HADR, uh, um, uh, the rescue issue, um, the, the recent empty new diamond, uh, was uh, a very good case study of, uh, of how two countries sort of, you know, uh, got involved in the HADR, uh, as well as um, on the search and rescue operations that have been carried out. So there's tremendous uh, amounts of um, uh, cooperation is required, but there is uh, not much of investment is unfortunately done. I mean, from 2014, you could see like, um, I mean, this, uh, this agreement should have been signed sometime back, but uh, on the mar maritime uh, domain awareness, uh, which is a really important area, especially on the long range patrol um, uh, uh, vessels, as well as the medium range reconnaissance. Uh, of, I mean, what you see in the Indian Ocean is a tremendous geopolitical pressure. The recent uh, discovery you know, in Indonesia of the Chinese uh, submerge um, uh, you have the um, the undersea um, uh, surveillance uh, operations that's going. I mean, it's been reported, and these things are. I mean, uh, I mean you would see a significant. Uh, I, I call it. Um, I mean, uh, in my the new work which I'm, it's coming out at the conundrum of an island. So I, I see a, a serious triangular uh, power projection coming in, especially with the Chinese inf uh, influence in the Indian Ocean, especially in the lit uh, little India. So here, what you have is uh, uh, the high echelon, like I mentioned in the the ambassador's statement. Although ambassador's uh, excellency's wish is that we be part of the Indo-Pacific, which is, uh, I mean, Sri Lanka has been playing a tremendous role in the international forum on the uh, two, uh, for example, on the international law back in the 1970s. So uh, as well as uh, for a rules-based order as a democracy should uh, stand up and sort of be uh, a strong partner with India. And this is really important. Uh, but here you have a foreign policy, but uh, you know, executed um, you know, in a binary uh, uh, way, uh, which is uh, you have the BRI also, and we have the, uh, the Indo-Pacific also. So uh, from the, uh, in the foreign policy, but I think Sri Lanka, uh, rather than being in the um, in the two, uh, seeing this uh, foreign policy as a binary choice, should getting engaged in the middle powers also. It's very important that Sri Lanka to tag with the middle powers because uh, projects like uh, European Union Camario, which is happening in the um, 
the Western Indian uh, Ocean uh, should uh, move into the eastern side also. You know, we, uh, we could uh, cooperate with the other uh, countries like the other littorals, like the Maldives, as well as the Bay of Bengal. Um, Camario project um, has huge resources from the European Union. So such things, uh, I think the, the littorals should look at, not just uh, looking at the binary choices on the Indo-Pacific or the Chinese uh, BRI. The recent, um, I mean, few days ago, um, uh, the, the US strategic framework for the Indo-Pacific, Pacific, the declassified version was released. Um, there, it clearly highlights the US interest um, as well as the, the importance of India in the Indian Ocean. I think I hear that Sri Lanka can uh, contribute immensely uh, as, as a geostrategic uh, uh, location. Uh, as you know, the, 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 uh, my previous speaker was speaking of the uh, sea lines of communication. So Sri Lanka is an important uh, island which uh, crosses uh, a, the, touches the, the sea lines of communication. The strategic water, which is the, the, the neck of water which connects the Indian Ocean to the South China Sea, um, will be uh, one of the highly contested uh, geopolitical contested areas. Um, I think um, providing uh, a rules-based order in the, in, the, uh, in the Indian Ocean, um, as well as adhering to the international norms, is a, is a really important uh, in the area that we, we could sort of work on. Um, I think um, uh, apart from that, the uh, Prime Minister Modi's Sagar initiat initiative, which is one of the most uh, beautiful initiatives which uh, he announced during his uh, premiership uh, initially in 2015. Uh, I, I mean, um, the security and growth for all uh, in the region is an important uh, initiative, which needs more investment, uh, more participation, uh, as well as uh, more openness, uh, how we could sort of work on. Perhaps uh, a conference on the theme of Sagar, on uh, working on Sagar, is really, really important. And Sri Lanka, I mean, uh, obviously has worked very closely uh, with India and also Maldives and uh, the Indian Ocean uh, countries. So they, they, even when it comes to the, uh, for example, the IUU fishing, uh, which is going on, uh, the uh, the piracy uh, or the uh, the narcotic issues. So all this uh, could be sort of worked together. One of the uh, the, we became a victim, for example, even the, the Easter Sunday bombing, which, you know, killing so many people, 250 lives. Uh, we become victims when we don't have the consolidated cap capabilities, when we don't have the corporations going on uh, in, a, in a strong manner. The, I think um, it is required not to give, uh, you know, passing at the last minute. I mean, obviously, we appreciate the warnings that was I mean, passed off, but then we should have worked a long time back together. Uh, to arrest these issues and these are really really important areas so um, again i think a very important topic Nathan, and so thank you very much thank, thank you asanga for that uh, those uh, very uh, succinct remarks and of course uh, highlighting uh, the contestation that is likely to happen and also uh, the uh, unspoken uh, you know the overhang of the chinese presence increasing chinese presence in the indian ocean region and how nations will uh, are being forced uh, willingly to make a choice, which, as you said, should not be the case, really. Uh, nations should be free to uh, work and cooperate with uh, every other nation in this uh, region. But uh, that notwithstanding, I want to go uh, to Admiral Sudarshan Srikhande, uh, who is based in Goa, another coastal state, a beautiful uh, state of Goa. Uh, Admiral Srikhande, um, I would like you to uh, take on from what uh, our two uh, speakers have said so far, and also uh, your views on uh, what India should do uh, to cooperate with uh, the uh, Indian Ocean region uh, countries. And then I'll go back to General Jalil to uh, let him finish uh, what he could not uh, because of poor connectivity, uh, maybe on our side. Uh, but uh, over to you, Admiral Trikhande. Uh, thank you. Uh, it, it is great to be part of a panel that includes Mr. Abhay Gunasekara, Mr. Uh, you know, Nitin Gokhale yourself and uh, General Musa Jalil. It, and I think it's a special honor to be discussing these issues where General Jalil is a participant. Uh, I'm certain that he's a very important addition to the Indian NDC's Hall of Fame for not only having been the Chief of Defense Force of Maldives for four years uh, and as the nation's defense minister after that during a very critical time, but also being a recipient of a very special gallantry medal, which is the Indian equivalent of the Paramvir Chakra for his role in, the, in, in saving the rule of law 
and a legitimate government in 1988 i mean these are points that even you know uh, mr gurushekar mentioned about the rule of law and its internal rule of law and international rule of law i will return That's to the right. geopolitical underpinnings because these aspects define the really strong history and underpinnings of sagar security and growth for all in the indian ocean region even before the term itself was sort of coined and you know you asked me what are the deeper sort of foundations of the mutuality of friendship and security within the indian ocean uh, uh, region island nations so i i feel that on the larger geo strategic canvas of the indian ocean region uh, we would realize that the very idea of sagar was informally part of the assurance and friendship framework that bound the island nations of mauritius and seychelles both at a greater distance and maldives as well as sri lanka at a slightly closer distance with the peninsula but very much also maritime nature of india to reiterate this let me say that as a very young officer a midshipman actually we visited maldives in the first half of 1980 and then mauritius with both there were already good beginnings of professional training between the armed forces especially the navies and the coast guards on the way back from port louis our ship was towing mauritian naval ship amar which had been presented to mauritius a few years before that back to india for a refit after doing duty in mauritian ez patrols to safeguard mauritian fishing resources at a time when the term iuu fishing hadn't even been coined we simply knew that crime as poaching on a geopolitical level india has either actively helped or stood by in fairly clear signaling to comply with requests made by the governments of all these nation states from 1971 during the jvp movements in sri lanka to an early 1980s threat to mauritius to the mid 1980s availability uh, for seychelles in case required and of course the involvement setbacks and further assistance uh, to sri lanka during more recent decades not to speak of the 1998 operation cactus which general jalil mentioned and in which he himself was a gallant participant uh, and in all this india participated assisted without getting embroiled into further involvement or overstaying one's welcome so to speak since we are speaking about island nations i am not even mentioning really the indian central role in the 1971 creation of bangladesh whose 50th anniversary we are celebrating this year add to this regular and fairly steady defense training and education cooperation several hadr missions the transfer of uh, hardware etc that has been mentioned and the periodic maintenance of that hardware ez patrolling etc and we have seen a whole range of cooperative activities in mutually useful respectful consultative and cooperative ways has it all been peaceful and rosy no i don't think it has and uh, i see three main factors the first is that security cooperation between any two countries or a larger aggregation requires regular effort to keep things going this has its moments but any relationship has some moments of friction on which we cannot put a put a pointed finger and yet at a strategic level the relationship between our three countries has actually been good uh, and and it is it is the long term relationship that has brought strength to to uh, you know uh, 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 to what we can do and occasionally helped us overcome the tactical level setback so to speak between our uh, the relations between our states itself the second is occasional challenges of domestic politics and this includes electoral compulsions ethno religious pressures that are brought to the forefront or for some transient purpose and often recede into the background after that these challenges can be managed but not wished away necessarily the third is the big one these are two sides of the coin of a nation's foreign policy in the context of time as also the roles that external powers may play in terms of enhancing their influence and engaging in competition with the possibility of confrontation in the ior in our own times that challenge clearly is china we need not go into any of its history or contours and complexities here i would like to flag just a few factor uh, aspects despite being further away from the indian ocean region geography and with very indirect historical and cultural relations and despite being a big economic player in all ior island nations the degree of domestic geopolitical unease that china causes is much greater 
than what India may have caused at any time, no matter how unjustified that feeling might have been in all these decades. This statement, I feel, can be confidently projected into the future. Here is why I think so. One is a phrase used by Mr. Gunasekara in an opinion piece of just a few days back in which he mentioned China's, and I quote, predatory policies. A second phrase that I have used to describe these policies is, of course, not mine, but borrowed from George Kennan's view of the Soviet Union's, what he called unfriendliness of purpose at the start of the Cold War. The term may be uncomfortable, unfriendliness of purpose, but we are in similar shades of a new Cold War in which all our nations are involved, willy-nilly. Second, our nations are democracies. We are actually people's republics without using the term at all. The people speak in their elections, regimes come and go, and over the past few decades, no nation is experimenting with democracy. There are no experiments going on, I'll emphasize. Democracy is here to stay. Three, India provides reassurance in terms of rule of law, a deep respect in theory and practice for a rules-based order, freedom of the seas, cooperative efforts to ensure good order at sea that includes and must progress on even stronger enshrined frameworks, perhaps of getting together to maintain that good order. Therefore, in the maritime expanse of the IOR, the three nations that participated in the recent fourth edition of the Trilateral National Security Advisors Dialogue, with even Mauritius and Seychelles participating virtually, can now take very concrete steps and must take concrete steps to step up mutual security cooperation to keep larger sea areas under individual national jurisdiction and seas beyond these, uh, 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 th these seas of jurisdiction to secure them from the problems of crime at sea that includes, as has been mentioned, piracy, narcotics, human trafficking, armed robbery, and of course, IUU, as well as terrorism, which has been something that all three countries have suffered from. We could discuss more specifics of what could be done, actually, and needs to be done, in my view, as the discussions progress. And fourth and finally, we must consider India's record with our maritime neighbors for boundary settlements, respect for sovereignty, friendliness of purpose, and so on, and contrast it with China's direct maritime neighbors like Japan, Taiwan, several ASEAN members feel. How do they feel? We know how they feel. What comfort would China bring if it were to become a maritime neighbor to IOR island countries through places, places and prolonged presence? So the competition ought not to lead to confrontation, but we cannot take that for granted. And I feel, therefore, that in terms of uh, uh, trilateral cooperation, in terms of the pentagonal cooperation with Mauritius and Seychelles added, we must capitalize on each other's histories, the decades of cooperation, the hardware relationships, and see how, as we are you know, coming up to Aero India and the Department of Defense Production is uh, you know, involved in that, how do we create mutual capacities? How do we maintain those capacities? How do we create future, you know, look at future hardware uh, issues in terms of uh, what, what uh, even Abhay mentioned of, uh, you know, maritime patrol aircraft. We are going to going in for uh, indigenous manufacture of new types with foreign collaboration. What can we do for all these? So the field is open. I think we need to put our minds together, come together, because in all this, I think we have to swim together. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll stop here. That's very well put, Admiral Shrikande. In fact, uh, you've got so many points uh, that you've made here, which can be uh, an individual um, webinar for an hour or so. Uh, but uh, for want of time, uh, we will uh, confine ourselves to the Indian Ocean region and the contestation uh, that is now upon us uh, willy-nilly uh, because of aggressive posturing, uh, aggressive uh, movements of the, uh, the, uh, the plan, the People's uh, Liberation Army Navy. Uh, in that sense, the Chinese Navy, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the choices that nations are forced to make. Uh, but uh, let me, uh, if uh, General Jalil is back with us, uh, as I can see the screen, but I'm not able to see him. And if you can hear me, General Jalil, uh, I want to uh, give you uh, some time to finish what you were talking about at that point in time, and then uh, have a discussion between uh, us at least, and uh, some take some of the questions uh, that have come up uh, in the chat box. Uh, General Jalil, if you are back with us. 
no i i think we've lost him there but uh, abhay let me uh, come to, uh, to asanga let me come to you uh, you know you, you spoke about um, a plan to have um, more cooperation and maybe uh, something that uh, should not be ad hoc or should not be last moment uh, do you think the nsa level place uh, recently and the agreement that has come up uh, will lead to something more lasting and more um, effective uh, in the coming months and years uh, what would be your uh, take on what had happened then Asanga, maybe the mic is mute. Yeah. Now maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I yes, think that's I a very important yeah. question, uh, Nitin, for both our countries. Um, what we had here in Colombo was a huge achievement. Uh, we should have had this. That's why I said before. But um, but uh, is it okay now? Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, is it okay now? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very important 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 question, Nitin, that you ask. Uh, because it's important for both countries. Um, the NSA level meeting was a huge success, and we should have had that before. And I actually want to congratulate both countries, the the defense ministries. Um, yeah, for both countries, I mean, uh, India and Sri Lanka at the defense level, because um, this cooperation, um, I mean, of course, the national security advisor is, is, is a close uh, a friend of our president. He knows him. But uh, friendship uh, alone, we have in South Asians, we have this friendship with uh, many uh, people. But then we have to institutionalize these things. It's very important that we institutionalize. And what we did was institutionalizing it. I mean, um, you know, back then, uh, that's why I mentioned in my one of my last pieces, when the Chinese submarines came here, uh, it was the National Security Advisor, um, I mean, uh, back then, Secretary of Defense, uh, who was our president, um, who, had a, uh, who had a conversation about that uh, incident. So uh, institutionalizing these things are really, really important. It's a huge investment, what we did. Uh, I think uh, it's really important that we work on these areas and institutionalizing. So what we did was that, and uh, I, I see that we can develop, we can make uh, India-Sri Lanka strategic level discussions as well as uh, a partnership discussions should happen uh, often uh, in Colombo. And that's something that um, I'm, I have been sort of speaking as a researcher for many years that we, we have for about, you know, uh, once in a, uh, two years or three years, but then uh, having it constantly uh, is really, really important because the dynamics, uh, what we surrounded, uh, are so much, uh, uh, you have geopolitical tension. Uh, that's if you look at uh, Sri Lanka's the, the recent visit of the uh, foreign minister uh, Jay Shankar. Uh, he clearly mentioned that uh, I mean he he is absolutely correct on the ECT uh, as well as what's going on in Sri Lanka. So he's absolutely correct. Uh, I want to sort of uh, clearly mention that um, his assessments uh, that's going on. Uh, I know that he he has not uh, he has used indirectly uh, the, the reference. Uh, to China, but um, but 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 his assessment is uh, is correct. So uh, here is is a country. Uh, you have a very significant geostrategic location of Sri Lanka being identified. I mean, from back then, uh, Sri, as you know, Sri Lanka was bombed by the Japanese in the World War Two. There was a reason for that. Some some people actually don't uh, know the reason why the Japanese bombed Sri Lanka. It was after uh, Singapore fell that the uh, the Japanese Japanese command sent them because the importance of uh, Sri Lanka's position, the location. Uh, I think um, the, the 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 investment uh, uh, Nitin uh, will go a long way. Uh, what we did in Colombo. Okay, thank you, uh, Asanga, for that uh, explanation and that uh, thought uh, for the future. Uh, General Jalil, if you can hear me, uh, I can I mean, see you. Uh, see you. See you. Uh, Yes. If you want to finish what you are talking that time in the about the minutes, then we will come back to you. 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 I was about. I was about to wind up. Uh, I have two more questions with you. Yeah, with you. Uh, before I commence, uh, uh, I, would, I would like to thank uh, Admiral Srikande and uh, Mr. Abe uh, Kunasekar for their. Uh, uh, kind remarks and compliments. Uh, we are experiencing uh, technical uh, uh, problems here. Uh, me on and off. Uh, 
like playing hide and seek which uh, this uh, this uh, a, a problems that we will envisage in uh, real life time okay thank you uh, well, I have already discussed the uh, importance of the trilateral meetings and the outcome they perceive. Uh, and also, uh, I have spoken in length about the bilateral exercises, uh, the Indian assistance to the Maldives. Uh, all these are from uh, open source. All these are from open source. Uh, uh, you can uh, check on it uh, if you have doubts. But when, when someone gives you a list, only you will realize how many are there and how much is there. Well, uh, it's amazing, I would say. Well, let me just uh, uh, carry on and kindly bear with me for another uh, five or ten minutes. I will try to wind up as uh, fast as I can. But since uh, I have so much to talk about, uh, that's why it's, it's been taking so long. Uh, uh, my suggestions for the bilateral exercises that we have between uh, India and the uh, uh, Maldives in a specific uh, military, uh, Indian military and uh, the MNDF, I would like to uh, suggest that to incorporate more emphasizes on the maritime domain uh, awareness, humanitarian disaster relief operations and on joint maritime exercises and surveillance and maritime security on training and support to MNDF. Facilitate capacity buildings, uh, ships, crafts for petrol and uh, surveillance and capacity building on hardware training in maritime pollution for MNDF. Uh, what I see as the way ahead is since the nations of the Indian Ocean region lacks in capabilities and capacities, the onus of consolidating their defense capabilities is on to India, I would say, because India has the capacity and the capability. And I must say that uh, India has used various platforms like Milan, Iora, IOS, to, to keep the IOR nations involved on a common platform. I hope this continues and prosper further because the beneficiaries are the nations of the IOR. In my conclusion, I would like to say that consolidating defense capabilities in the Indian Ocean region, countries for securities of global commons, is the need of the hour. I am very glad that India has been a very reliable partner for IOR nations towards achieving this aim especially in defense and security. I can vouch for the enormous goodwill that India has earned in the Maldives by virtue of its support to MNDF. We feel safe because our reliance on India in defense is equally reciprocated by India in a very mature manner without any hidden agendas. The results are for all of us to see However, we need to ensure that we move together and jointly take on the transnational crimes for a safe and stable Indian Ocean region. Thank you. Thank you for your patience and thank you. So, uh, General Jalil, that was very thoughtful and uh, very um, generous of you to uh, highlight India's contribution in uh, helping Maldives and the MNDF. Uh, Admiral Srikant, if I can come to you because the points that uh, General Jalil made. Uh, because of his vast experience uh, about uh, um, giving assistance not just in terms of defense training or defense hardware but also trying to uh, have something common for the indian ocean region through uh, forums like uh, iora ions and uh, these trilateral cooperation uh, going forward uh, do you see that india's approach uh, where he mentioned india's approach has been mature in not imposing its will on the nations uh, in the region uh, or uh, not being very aggressive like uh, China has helped uh, India in the long run uh, since uh, so many years India has been helping uh, these countries and has really uh, has a large footprint, uh, in a very benevolent footprint if I can say that in these countries. What's your view? I, I, I go along with that. Um, you know, India see 
India sees all island nations as partners and has seen them as partners for I think decades, as I mentioned. And they also see us as partners. And I, as I mentioned, it's not without speed breakers. It's not without potholes that this relationship. And yet, it has it has you know uh, gone on uh, quite quite correctly uh, and and maturely. So, in fact, I would say that maturity has been seen on the part of all participants in this, and and not only you know India, but as 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 the bigger bigger you know uh, nation, the bigger partner. the one that has provided a lot of training and assistance and hardware and is in a position to do more of that in in year, you know decades to come i think uh, uh, we we now need to get on to far more concrete steps and uh, what i would i would suggest i am i am sure that you know people involved in all three governments are probably working on this i am i am just an external observer uh, and uh, you, so here are some of my thoughts one or two uh, are that we need to have uh really concrete systems now frameworks for joint patrolling uh joint patrolling uh, in terms of uh, uh 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 aerial patrolling um and and that's nothing to do with aero india <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's it's all 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 the all the while it has been a great uh, you know a multiplier of effort as in fact uh, you know general jalil himself uh, mentioned but uh, in terms of now uavs Uh, unmanned, uh, uh, you know, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and uh, uh, in terms of ship patrolling, also we need to increase the number of ships available to our partners. You know, mainly crewed by them, uh, which which are which will which will sail in their uh, zones, both uh, uh, zones under their jurisdiction. But I think our surveillance ISR now needs to go to larger places of the IOR to prevent. uh problems within the jurisdiction but here i would like to suggest two points one is that all countries need to understand each others uh, you know the nuances and the differences of each others international laws which uh, govern both uh, uh what happens on board on on board land itself once a crime is detected at sea and what happens with this within areas of jurisdiction and what could we do all all three of us together to prevent and roll back and fight infringements of freedom of the seas through piracy uh, armed robbery terrorism uh, 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 poaching uh, uh, narcotics etc that happens beyond zones of jurisdiction i think we need to work out mechanisms and so that we can we can do some of those things uh, you know there are there is the uh, international whaling commission there is the indian ocean tuna commission but these are you know they they need to be empowered and here one one suggestion i have is that all three of us and in fact all five countries and in, uh, you know uh, uh, need to get together and i am including mauritius and seychelles to be able to prepare a common uh, party line if i may call it that way to discuss in international fora that is very very important and none of this is going to be against the you know very idea of freedom of the seas and rule of law the the other point is i think was mentioned is inter- intelligence sharing it has to become now you know more concrete more regular and one that you know is 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 shared with much greater confidence and i think the the point that was made about maritime domain awareness the ior uh international fusion center at delhi which has which will have more and more liaison officers and a secretariat etc so all this needs to be done and the point you made about ions and iora which which can deal with the larger issues but sometimes these bodies are so large that we can do we can we can actually achieve many of the you know talk shop objectives of these larger shops with the workshop objectives and achievements that we can do at the trilateral bilateral and perhaps pentagonal level uh, within this and this is the time when we are talking about the quadrilateral security dialogue uh, you know we have security dialogues amongst ourselves so a lot of initiatives are going on some of which you know not not all participants might might feel as comfortable with many of these initiatives but i feel in a cumulative sense all these initiatives together will will somehow uh, you know uh, calm the waters uh and and keep the water safe if i may put it that way well i think very well put and i think that's the road map that uh, decision makers in the three countries at least uh, should look at if not all the five countries to begin with uh, asanga there is a question uh, for you 
from a reader from a viewer uh, ma tara uh, i don't know whether it's a real name but at least uh, the question is uh, seems to be uh, quite interesting and uh, he or she asks uh, sri lanka has a tight rope to walk in the coming decade and what are the pitfalls for sri lanka in the coming decade in strategic terms if you can uh, respond to that uh, briefly and then i'll go to general jalil uh, for maybe a final comment uh sri lanka i think uh, clearly uh, it's a very important question um we need to understand our strategic choices that we make um at, at the foreign policy level it's very very important the choices because some of the choices that we have made we are revisiting right now um i mean the present government uh, subsequent government uh, previous government also what it did was revisiting uh, the policies strategic choices that you've been made we know that uh, certain projects has not generated their revenue uh, for now sri lankan economy is actually ailing right now um, mm-hmm. because of massive amounts of uh, infrastructure development uh, that has gone but there is no um, revenue coming from this so there was or have there been an opaqueness i leave that question to you i think um, there was an opaqueness uh, in most of the projects and um, it is said that Sri Lanka who has been preaching uh, on the, in the 1970s on law of the sea its contributions on the international norms should speak back again about the um, you know rules based order uh, it is really really important that we make uh, the strategic choices that we make uh, with the democratic uh, nations uh, the nations that adhere to um, the the rules and the values if you look at um, the the new national security advisor jake sullivan uh, who just uh, uh, took office uh, of the biden administration uh, who i mean what he is he is clearly mentioned the importance of uh, the partners uh, and the partners that uh, that is been sort of ignored the allies so there's going to be huge investment in the new biden administration uh, towards his allies as well as partners so sri lanka needs to be on the on the on on the on the path that sri lanka has been sort of be, i mean been there i mean on democratic values uh, as well as uh, there there are moments that democracies have have had low moments as um, uh, i think um, admiral um, uh, clearly mentioned there are low moments but uh, democracies doesn't die like that so we 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 actually come back but the a, a different model uh a model uh, which is coming in i see uh, patterns of uh, uh, the, the china is celebrating its centenary the chinese communist party uh, this year there are different models being uh, executed in developing nations so here is here is a time that we get together as nations uh in the indian ocean and sort of have uh, clearly uh, these are the these are our norms these are our values that we cherish and we should put that forward so sri lanka when making the strategic choices has to be ex- uh, has to be careful and has to has to have uh, you know the the values that have been uh, uh, the, that we have cherished uh, for the last uh, you know decades so that's really important to bring it forward thank you thank you asanga for that uh, response uh, general jalil uh, last uh, word to you uh when we talk about uh, indian ocean region molly this um, tiny size or small size uh, holds an important uh, geostrategic position or geographical position in that sense uh, what are the choices that uh, maldives needs to make uh, in strategic terms you would think for the we for and look at and look at short term uh, strategies we need to make a uh, long term strategic views we need to look at the geography we need to leave a better place behind us so we we need to join hands join hands with trust is the way ahead for the indian ocean region extra regional uh, nations can give tactical solutions strategic solutions but we only be the possible for the io or uh, uh, nations together uh, uh, to survive uh uh in this unforeseeable uh word i would say 
I'm, I'm sure that uh, I would like to uh, make note of what uh, Admiral uh, Khande said, Sri Khande said, and I totally agree uh, to what the Admiral said. We need common laws, common procedures is the only way ahead by joint exercise and be rated. I rated I because because uh, in the service uh, we speak more or less the same language, but. Uh, it differs, differs, differs uh, uh, in a civilian context. So uh, I am for it. I wholeheartedly believe that a coordinated effort by the uh, uh, nations among the among the uh, region. Question again, I think. But but. Um, I'm getting again uh, disconnected somehow. Somehow. I can hear. We can hear you. Can hear, uh, can hear you. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, that is my hope, and that is my wish, and that's what I am totally convinced. Jointness. Jointness is the key word for me to deliberate here. Jointness and trust. That's the truth. Thank you, sir. I think uh, th that really sums up the entire uh, effort uh, of these webinars that are being organized. This is one of the first in the series of webinars that uh, we are organizing in uh, relation in uh, run up to the uh, Aero India that is happening in Bengaluru, as I said, in February. Uh, uh, all that remains for me is to say that uh, thank you very much, all of you. Despite the distances, we uh, our thoughts have converged. We've all agreed that uh, this is uh, something that is uh, in everybody's interest to uh, do uh, cooperation, not just in defense, but also in environment protection, climate change, and of course, uh, doing uh, better for our peoples, uh, all, the, all the three uh, countries, the citizens of all the three countries, uh, the people's interest must be uh, foremost. And I think uh, that is where uh, the cooperation between these countries of Indian Ocean region uh, will be consolidated through defense cooperation, of course, and uh, other means of uh, working together for development of these countries. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank you, all of you, in fact, uh, for joining and taking time off uh, joining this webinar. I thank uh, the Department of Defense Production as well as the uh, organizers of Aero India for giving Bharat Shakti, our uh, digital platform uh, that has been uh, at the forefront of uh, projecting and uh, promoting cooperation amongst uh, the regional players uh, and not allowing uh, extra regional players to uh, dictate terms. So uh, thank you very much and we hope to see you again sometime, if not virtually, maybe uh, in person yeah, uh, in awesome. the uh, COVID situation improves. Thanks again and uh, see you and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you all.